Alright, alright, cut. All right. So, baseball card junkies TV top 85 401 here with Mike O, Aaron Davis, Super 25 Sports Cards, JMVP. And we're going to talk about what you should expect if you go to a national. So, I'm going to have Mike O start. 2017 National, first of all, was a ton of fun. But if you're going, you do want to prepare. Like, you don't want to just show up and go, oh, I'm going to the National, cool, and be all excited. Like, you do have to think about it. You want to take it somewhat serious, of course, because um, there's a ton of stuff you need. What did some of the first time guys think? Big, 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 big process. Being my first time going there, uh, a lot of things that I learned. Number one, you must have a pen and a pad. Uh, when I went in there, it can get overwhelming. You can forget different car tables that, you know, you may have saw something that you liked. So it's important that you take uh, a pen and a pad to write with. Yeah. I'll also add, I agree with that. I'll, I'll also add, don't buy the first card you see. No. That's a huge mistake at this place. You see so you see a card you think you, you might not see it again, you see it fifteen times, and the last guy you see at the end of the day, he had it cheaper than the guy you bought it from. So you can make a better move, circulate, go around the show, and then come back and make your purchases after you decide where you want to go. And that's where the pen and paper come into play, I think. You yeah, know, right? definitely, definitely check out. Don't spend once you walk in, you're gonna be overwhelmed for once, but definitely don't spend too much time at one booth just because you see something that you want and you want to investigate it, definitely just kind of, you know, take a quick gaze at that booth, get to the next one. Like uh, Aaron Davis said, grab a pen and paper, or like I did, I used my phone and took pictures of the booth just so I, I knew where it was at and it was easier to help me find find its location at the show. So That's good pen and paper, use your phone, bring your phone charger, of course, because <laughs> uh, we had some battery issues today. So <laughs> yeah. some of us. <laughs> that is great advice, yeah, bring your phone charger. And another thing, guys, when you walk in, the, the, the size of the show is, I would say, it, at minimum, the size of six football fields. So when it's just so easy to get lost, and it, it can be really, really, really overwhelming. And that's the thing that you're going to hear from us saying over and over again. It is overwhelming. So yeah. one... Uh, no, uh, no, I was just going to say the scope of it. Like, when you watch the, the various channels and videos, you're going to see about the national. And when people say, like... They're overwhelmed when they talk about the scope of this thing. Like, they're not exaggerating. The national is, it's unbelievable. I mean, I know Bob and I are both from Philadelphia and New York, and so I can only speak to that. But we're lucky enough to have a variety of shows, and there's a lot of pretty big size shows. Sure, absolutely. And the national is five times bigger than any of those shows. Absolutely. And, you know, people come from all over the country, and there's people, you know, you might just have a mall show with like 10 tables, so especially if that, you're going to walk in and like Nate said, it's, you're going to run across six football fields. Yeah. You, I walked it yesterday. I made sure I went by every table. It took me four and a half hours. And yeah. it, I didn't spend a lot of time at any single table, so yeah. that's all part of it. The yeah. scope is outrageous, so it does take preparation. Yeah, and one, one of the tips I've heard from a lot of people is, you know, you got to go for more than one day, and the first day, probably the best thing to do is not even buy anything, just kind of familiarize yourself with the just the vastness that is the national. I mean, it, the, the place is just just huge. Yeah, just take it in that first day. Yeah, yeah that's, that's definitely what I, I'm doing and getting ready tomorrow, and then don't, you have a plan, but don't have a uh, like, don't try and stick to that plan because it's going to be impossible to stick to that plan. Like I said, I wasn't coming here for binder material. I took a break and sat down. And next thing you know, I'm rummaging through the boxes. And I got plenty of binder material today. And unfortunately, I didn't bring a binder to flip them in, you know. So bring uh, supplies, too. Um, I don't think I brought enough of them or was prepared in that sense because I bought some stuff, you know, that I wasn't um, planning on getting today. So definitely bring supplies, top loaders, penny sleeves, team bags. Those little boxes, uh, what are those BCW boxes? Yeah, those are real. Stuff important. like that. Those will come in handy. You know, a backpack, um, which I didn't think to bring till just looking at other people's YouTube videos from from the past shows. Just knowing I need to bring a bag, and um, for people on a budget too, um, you can use cards as currency. The the vendors are willing to trade with you, make deals. You can sell cards to to vendors, which I didn't know till I, I think a day before coming to the show. So. 
that's a good thing to know if it's your first time going to the National, if you plan on going next year in Cleveland. Yeah, and another big thing that, that, you'll, uh, that you can do is if you, <clears throat> if you live locally, you could probably bring a lot of cards and you, you'll see people off on the side, um, you know, like doing trades and stuff like that. You can do, you know, you can um, make deals with other collectors that aren't people that have a table. I know Bob made a few deals today. Absolutely, yeah. And uh, I mean, I bought I bought five or six cards from people that weren't at tables. So uh, it, it's good to you know kind of connect with other collectors and see what kind of deals you can make on the side. And that's totally you know I mean it's fine to do there. There's no there's no rules. It's it's uh, in, ter in terms of what you can do with people that don't have a table. Yeah, and we keep talking about it. it's an overwhelming experience, and it, it can be, but that doesn't mean it's not a blast. It doesn't mean it's not fun. Like, oh, tremendous. Yeah. You're in card heaven. You're just yeah, nice. between seeing cards that you collect, cards that you don't necessarily collect but are outstanding, high-end, low-end stuff, memorabilia, all the companies are there. You get to see all this stuff, so it's absolutely fun. And, you know, if you have fellow collectors that you're looking to meet up with, to me that's... Uh, one of the best parts, if not the best. So uh, it's definitely. got like we're encouraging people to go. To oh, it's an amazing it's experience. Awesome. As soon as this video is over, I'm booking my flight to Cleveland. It's an amazing <laughs> yeah. experience. Yeah. And another thing is, if you are a YouTuber, make sure that people know who you are. I mean, uh, and, and put yourself out there because you're going to meet a lot of people. I mean, there, there's just so many people out there you can meet, and that's half the experience right there is connecting with collectors and having the opportunity to meet people that live across the country that you normally couldn't connect with because it's, you know, the National is a great hub to meet people. So, I mean, it's just amazing, you know, the relationships and people that you can meet up with and it's just so much fun. So, um, tr try to connect with people before you go to Nationals. That way you can, you know, be better prepared uh, people that you're going to meet up with and, and, yeah, make sure yeah, you got their I, numbers. and, and, and to kind of build on what you're talking about, that that's all part of being involved and being part of the community. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it might take a while, and some people have been doing it for years, and some people like, Jay's only been doing videos, I think, for two, three months, and he's already found a home in the community and making a bunch of friends, and... And now I'm addicted, and <laughs> <a> baseball card <laughs> junkie, and... and have a fun old, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, that's why... You know, explore YouTube and you know get out there and comment on people's videos and mm -hmm. share the hobby. You know, it, it's fun collecting and you know your collection is for you and you collect what you want. But it's a lot more fun if you're collecting, and talking to other people, and you know learning stuff. I mean, you can learn so much. We all learn from Aaron Davis here. Yeah, straight knowledge, <laughs> <laughs> and, and he knows it. That's why he's just like straight knowledge. That's a <laughs> That's what I bring to the table, AK. Yeah. yeah. You know, one thing too I want to say too, and this is for guys that are new at trading or buying or even selling, I learned something very valuable today just by talking to the dealers. Don't be afraid to do that. I went to a dealer today and just asked him, you know, hey, I got a card. I've never done this before. What do you think it's worth? What do you think I should be looking for, you know, far as pricing goes? Don't be afraid to do that. That's part of their job is also to educate the buyer as well uh, so they will know. I mean, I, I met a, a, an awesome guy, an awesome seller today. He told me what I should be looking for, what I would get, and, and if you talk to them and get to know them a little bit, they'll, they'll even recommend people that you can go to that will buy from them. This guy gave me a guy to go to. I went right to that guy took me maybe five minutes and the guy just cashed me out just like that. It was just incredible. So don't be afraid to go in there and talk to those guys and ask those questions about what your cards are worth if you're buying or selling or, or anything like that. Talk to them because that's what they're there to do is to help. Yeah, I, I, I would agree with that. And also, I think you lose track of that the dealers are just people too. So if you strike conversation, you talk to them, you can make friends with the dealers and sometimes get you a better deal. Sometimes you might sell a card, mm -hmm. but they're just people. So if you actually talk to them, you know, you can make some friends and get a little education and you know, maybe get a better deal. Yeah, yeah and what I've noticed too is a lot of the these dealers here at the show particularly, you know, because sometimes it's not as much, uh, it's not as true at your LCS maybe, but 
a lot of the dealers here too are actual collectors. Yeah, you know, and they actually care yeah. about the hobby, and they Agreed. they don't want to BS you into something, you know, because it's gonna look bad on them if you go over here and say, hey, so and so said this is what I need to pay for, and this, and then hey, I got ripped off. It's gonna look bad on them. They they truly care about what they're getting you. Um, I'm not saying you know 100% of everyone there is, but a lot of the guy, you know, a lot of the vendors there, dealers are definitely they definitely care about the hobby. And they're definitely true collectors. You there's know? there's dealers at the national. I've never seen this before. I went to tables. They didn't have anything for sale. They bought a table to show their collection. Yeah, they're yeah. such collectors. They just want to show their collection, so they spend a lot of money to show their collection. I don't know if I'd ever do it, yeah. but that just shows you they're just people. They're just like us, you know. They're just people. Yeah, I was at the uh, one of the one of those tables, yeah. and he talked to me about 30, 45 minutes when I got separated from you guys the first time, and it was just about the YouTube community. He said, "What are you guys all?" You guys all live near each other, and I said, "No, we're all from. We all just, you know, some of us just met. It took about." couple hours ago you know? <laughs> yeah and he's like really I'm like how did you guys meet and I said just the YouTube community and he said YouTube you know and he's like I know about YouTube what do you mean YouTube baseball community and I, I told him and he wrote some of our names down and he said as soon as I get to my hotel room I'm gonna look you guys up and that sounds you know kick-ass and I want to get involved so there again they're true collectors and they, they definitely care about the hobby so don't be afraid to you know wheel and deal bargain or just even ask just ask straight up, hey, I don't know if I should, this is a lot of money that I'm going to spend on this card. Is, is it, it, you know, am I going to get screwed out of this? Is this what I should really pay? Mm -hmm. And then two, I know some people didn't come because they're on a budget or whatever, which I totally understand, but come out and hang out. Um, just, it, I, I didn't do too much today. I did some scoping, but just hanging out with Michael, uh, meeting Aaron Davis for the first time, meet, well, meeting all these guys for the first time. I feel like I've known them forever just from YouTube and, but just come and hang out and there's stuff here from 10 cents into the thousands. So there's stuff for everybody. So don't feel that you have to have loads and loads of money to have a good time because it's, it's not necessarily true. Yeah, and it's understandable that people can't necessarily get out every year. I mean, it depends on location, it depends on what's going on in life, but mm -hmm. I've said it numerous times in videos on my channel, um, like make it a goal to come out to a national at some point. I was going to say the um, same thing. Start, start putting, it's a blast, man. Start putting 20 hours away a week, yeah. <clears throat> bi-weekly, to do it. It's worth the experience. It's probably one of the best. I work a lot, but it's probably one of the best weekends I've had in a long time. I mean, this is only my second, second national, but I feel exactly the way I did last year when I went. <laughs> <laughs> False alarm. Um, like, you, these... You know, if you're involved in the community, you're watching people's videos, you're learning from people, you're building relationships like we talk about, and you're talking through whatever channels, whether it's text or uh, Facebook Messenger, email, YouTube comments, whatever. Um, but like you come out and again, you enjoy the cards, you enjoy everything the National has to offer. If you're looking for autographs, I mean, there's incredible opportunities to get guys who don't sign often um, and to meet them if that's your thing. And, all this stuff, but you know, you just get to hang out and meet up with people that you've only met once or twice or you know, a few times in your life. But I said it last year and I say it again. You, next thing you know, you're hanging out, laughing your ass off, and you feel like you're together with you know, childhood friends. Yeah, like absolutely. You know, like you feel like you've known people for 20 years. But yeah. there's, this, there's this commonality that we, we all have this. Similar interests, so as soon as you meet, there's just this bond that you feel like, you know, you've known each other forever. Exactly. You know, it, it, yeah, it, and it's a special thing. And it's there's variations thing. of collectors. Like, he'll collect Cubs. I'll collect Phillies. Barry Bonds. Vintage. Everything. Vintage and everything and new stuff. The, but the main with 500 PCs. <laughs> <laughs> Bob and I were both bust up. That's where I'm in. What card do you <laughs> But I mean, everyone collects a little bit different and different things, but ultimately, yeah. we all collect Absolutely. cards and collectibles and, you know, obviously love the sports and stuff. So next thing you know, you're in a hotel room, crammed up, doing a Baseball Card Junkies TV episode. Wait for dominoes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. So thank you so much for joining us. I hope all you new collectors or new YouTubers can get something out of this. I will put a link down below to everybody's channel, Mike O, Aaron Davis, Bob Super 25 Sports Cards, and JMVP. If you have any questions, you can put a, a question in this video. You can put it on my channel, Top City 5401, 
or, uh, or the Baseball Card Junkies TV. All right, so thanks so much and uh, happy collecting and see you guys next year in Cleveland. Happy collecting, guys. Peace. Hey.